Welcome to our November 28th worship service. It's the first Sunday of Advent. Blessed is the season which engages the whole world in a conspiracy of love. Precious God, as we light the candle of love today, we ask that your presence be real, that it be moving, that it stirs us on this journey of Advent, traveling to a place that we see the birth of our Savior, the coming of our King, and the one who came to set us all free. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all through this service. Amen. Let's join together for our call to worship. Christ draws near. The season of love is dawning. God's realm is here. The season of love is dawning. It's time to wake up. The season of love is dawning. Christ draws near. The season of of love is dawning. <laughs> Let's have our children come forward for children's time. Here we are once again, friends. It's Advent time. Now, Advent is our journey towards a celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. It is our intentional focus of moving closer to celebrating Christmas. Now, Christmas is about so many things. Christmas is about sharing a time of intentional love with our friends. Christmas is this time that builds up hope within our expectations of who we will be able to see and, yes, even the gifts that we may receive. As we look at the joy of, of being with our family and our friends and even playing with our new toys and our new gifts, there is a joy that extends the joy of every day and hopefully as love, hope, and joy pull together we find a place of peace within our lives. 
as we move closer to Christmas, I want you all to remember the love that comes from God, the hope that comes through Jesus' actions, the joy that comes as we are in community with other people, and how that we can find peace on earth when they are all combined together in the small baby that we celebrate who was born on Christmas Day. Today is our light of love, so I want to give you a prayer challenge. I want you to take a moment this week and pray for the ones who show you love. Your teachers, your parents, your adoptive parents, your aunts and uncles, your mentors, your coaches, your preachers and your Sunday school teachers, your guardians, all of the individuals who exist in your lives who show you love. And I'd like for you to pray a prayer of thanks and gratitude for all those people. And maybe also pray over ways that you can show that love to others. Happy Advent, everyone. Let's join together in prayer. Precious and loving God, we thank you. We thank you for the journey that we have in our lives with you. And we thank you for the ones who display your love to us. As we go on this journey towards Christmas, please reveal to us your image in so many beautiful ways. And in your son's precious name we pray. Amen. Let's join together in prayer. God of new beginnings, on this advent of advent, renew our lives with new hope and spirit-led focus. Enter our lives and our worship with your loving presence. Shine through us with your love, that we may abound in love for one another, for all your people, and for all your creation. Amen. Let's join together in the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
let's join together in our prayer of assurance. In the night we went astray, and our wandering mercy found us. Christ restored us. Love embraced us. The past is over and gone. Our future is wide open. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the book of Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of God because of you? Night and day, we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Thank you, God, for the inspiration of this word. Amen. Let's join together in prayer. Precious and loving God, we thank you for the experience that we are about to have on moving through this journey with you. Precious God, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to celebrate much in the same way as our forebears did so many years ago, waiting with anticipation for a coming promise to be fulfilled. Precious God, as we join you in this time, as we are beginning to see promises fulfilled and we begin to have new prayers of aching need emerge, we ask that you light the lights of love, hope, joy, and peace so that we can follow their glow to light that Christ candle and see the one who came to embody everything that we wish for. Be with us today, Lord, as we celebrate the light of love. And in your son's precious name, I pray. Amen. What a beautiful and lovely opportunity we have this year, much more different than the past that we this year celebrate Advent with a light of hope and love and joy and peace somewhat differently than we had last year. Last year, we moved into this time of a journey, and never more so than last year could we equate our journey, our experience, to those who waited for so long for the coming of the Messiah, for the one to come and to become a light that cuts through the darkness. If you can remember to last year, many of the sermons that I gave for our video worship service, because we were unable still to truly join in person in our sanctuary. Many of our sermons, excuse me, many of our sermons were shared in a place of darkness. We saw in that time period, in our time period of the necessity of social distancing, the, the pre-vaccine age that we were still trying to find spacing apart, but yet still celebrate a light that has come to transform the world. This year, in my white robe and my white stole with white candles and in a very brightly lit room, I want to show you where we're getting closer to. No, we're not done on the journey. Yes, COVID is still a concern and still something that we have to take very seriously. But this year we stand 
in our sanctuary. This year, unlike last, we will have a Christmas service that is inside our sanctuary, celebrating the one who has come to fulfill a promise. And this year, because of last, we can experience that narrative with a celebration because we remember being the ones who walked within the darkness of worry and concern. And yes, one year later, those worries and concerns still exist, but we exist within a more bright narrative than we did one year ago. Today, we're going to kick things off with the most important thing. Today, as we light the candles, we light the first candle, which is the candle of love. The difference that Jesus Christ came as each candle of love, hope, joy, and peace represents one of the identities of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to be a new idea of love. As we look at the Greek words and as we break down the many varying ways that we experience and celebrate love. So many understood as we look through the Greek translations and the Greek words that connect to love. So many understood Eros. Eros being the lovely kind of love. So many understood Philio the love for our brothers and our sisters that existed around us, that exist around us, the love that we share for others, that we invite into our narratives to go on this journey with us. We understood Storje, Storje being the parenting love, the ones who come to share and teach and communicate and to show through actions what love is. Through Storge, we begin to see the importance of the coming of Jesus Christ because where so many understood the love they have for their partners in life, as so many understood the love that they hold for their brothers and sisters in their life journey, as so many understand the love that a parent shows to a child, There was one love that was yet to be seen, and it's a love that we celebrate with the lighting of the fifth candle on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and it is the love of agape. The love of agape. Let's look at the other loves because the other loves come with it some responsibilities. As we talk about even Eros, Eros comes with it a responsibility of dedication to the one that we are passionately drawn to. We don't just receive things from that relationship. Hopefully there is a place in Eros in our lives that we both are receiving and sharing. It's not a one-sided imbalanced love. Hopefully within true arrows, as we find the ones that we are passionately drawn to, we see the necessity of both being an image in their lives that take care of needs, that cares and comforts the other person, as well as being a person who is cared and comforted. As we begin to look at all of these images, as we begin with Eros, the love, the passionate love of our lives, none of these are one-sided. And too many times as we've observed within our lives, we see the downfall of that love because when Eros becomes too one-sided, it's not fulfilled. As Eros becomes too one-sided, it becomes a bit corrupted. And we've seen in our lives through failed relationships, through the distortion of the imagery that Eros is displayed to the world, we see too many times how 
a one-sided image of eros can become destructive and hurtful. But when we see the true partnership that exists within eros as each individual cares for the other equally, that strong partnership can help people become individuals they never thought of before. Let's look at Philio. Philio, the image of brotherly and sisterly love. Now, I, I exist within this realm that I am an only child. So I have to share with you, I, everything that I'm about to share with you comes from second or even third hand information because I have become the one as a only child that received all the love and all the attention. And unfortunately, my life as an only child that I have been blessed and experienced by is a part of the imagery of Philio that we see the distortion of Philio. Brotherly love. And again, using the, the imagery of the positive side of Eros, within brotherly love, when we begin to make our teammates, as we begin to find ways that we interact with each other as the body of Christ, as we use the Apostle Paul's words that he shares with the church of Corinth of what it means for each individual, each brother and sister that exists within the kingdom of God, that they find how their gifts add to the greater body is when we see Philio, the love for a brother and our sisters, reach its fruitful place. We see the distortion of this as well. So many times we have shunned the images that our brothers and sisters share as they begin to find the fullness of their identities. And they want to find a place where that they can share the fullness of their identity with the greater body of God and sometimes within the corruption of Philio. Individuals become very possessive of their image of a balanced world. Sometimes within the corruption of Philio, sometimes individuals become possessive of what they can benefit from within their lives. And when we move to this moment of a corrupted image of Philio, that the individuals are more focused on what they have for themselves than what it means to make a place at the table for others, even within our differences and especially in our misunderstandings. That is when love is searching for the place to rebuild. The true image of pure, whole filio is the acknowledgement that I may be a part of a task and I may be able to do the whole thing and I may be able to receive 100% of the benefits of what's being done. But the more that we include other people in the journey, not only is it a larger celebration, but so many other people begin to find a place of wholeness in their lives. I use this Harry Chapin quote quite frequently, and it fits with this idea of pure, whole filio. It's our lives are nor, no better lived or our time is no better spent than the time that we spend caring for the lives of others. Filio. Pure filio. Helping each person find their spiritual gifts and how those spiritual gifts fit in a greater story of renewal for the greater world. Let's continue. Let's look at Storge. Now, Storge is one that we don't talk about a lot because so many times we have equated the parenting image of God to agape. 
Storge is a parenting love. Now, as we look at a parenting love, our parenting love also comes with it limitations and pitfalls. Unfortunately, there comes times that the breadwinner has to leave to to do the work, to care for their family, to do the parental responsibilities of being a caregiver, being a teacher, that sometimes needs have been set aside and we leave heartbroken young friends at home when we're out doing what we feel we should be doing and we're out living to responsibilities that we may not need to be living to. As we shared within the imagery of Philio, as we talk about the individuals that we call our brothers and our sisters who begin to share ideas and express identities that we may not agree with or we may not understand, that exists well in Storge. Within our parental minds, we begin to have an image of who our children will become. We begin to build hopes and dreams of what our children one day will be. And sometimes that imagery is built in us wanting to relive opportunities that once upon a time we forgot. And then other times we begin to build an idealistic life for our children that there's no possible way our children can ever achieve or ever live up to. And at times, as we've seen, as we set unreal expectations for those that we are called to teach and to care for and to train and to build up, Sometimes we've seen the negative side of someone not living up to another's expectation and those dear friends become hurt, pushed aside, or forgotten. I want us to think about all these negative imageries that exist within Eros, Belio, and Storge. Because it's any moment that within our lives that our interpretation of love becomes too imbalanced. When Eros becomes too much about one and not about both, it's imbalanced. When Philio becomes too much about my ideas and pushing away those who disagree with me, that's imbalanced. As Storge becomes a parenting that pushes someone to live up to the things that I myself could not live up to, that is imbalanced. And then here comes the blessing of what we know as agape. Agape exists within the realm of balancing. There is no expectations. Agape is a love without expectations. Agape is a love that comes to balance the scales of the imbalanced loves that existed before it so that we can have a centering peace and know I will have failures. I will have flaws. But nonetheless, I am still loved by God. That's what everyone's waiting for in this journey to the birth of Christ. Today, as we celebrate what the light of love actually means, it is the light of agape that comes to build a balancing focus in the places where that there is imbalance. As we move away from the impure imagery that we see daily of Eros, but we move towards the pure unity, balanced relationship of this passionate love of Eros that exists without expectations for one, but for care for all. As we look at Philio, as we exist in our everyday 
of individuals that have different ideas, different agendas, different focuses, but we find that, that unifying center that brings balance to those relationships. And we're willing to set some things aside so that others can be added in and we all find ourselves on the journey towards purity and wholeness within faith. As we look at Storge, as we set expectations aside and are willing to open our hearts and our eyes to see the purity of the individuals in front of us, those are the places that true agape exists. True agape can flow and true agape can bring the wholeness that so many people waited for so long ago with their prayer-filled hopes of a loving Messiah. As we look at this light of love, I want you to hold on to the one thing. When we can see individuals for who they purely are, when we're willing to set aside our own expectations, when we are willing to set aside our own desires and make it about everyone, we begin to see the wholeness that a baby child showed in Bethlehem so many years ago. May the light of love flow through your lives this week, and may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God is love. Amen. Let's join together in our prayer of giving. Bless these gifts with love, holy God, that they may share your love and justice in a hurting world. Help us grow in abundant love, that our lives may overflow with generosity, love, and justice. May our ministries partner with you in healing your world and its hurts. Amen.
Let's join together for our closing benediction. May God bless you to abound in love for one another and for all, just as Christ abounds in love for you. And may God strengthen your hearts in holy love and your lives in just peace, that you may be blameless before God at the coming of Jesus Christ. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. God is love. Amen. We'd like to have the opportunity to get to know you. Please email us at ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And if you've been enjoying our services online, please email us. Please say hello. Again, that's ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And also, if you'd like to give to our church, please go to northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Again, that's northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Thank you for joining us.